Hello everybody and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. I did a video about John and Yoko and how they chose to live at the Dakota. And it was said that Lennon picked the Dakota because the view reminded him of looking out over the parks in his native Liverpool. And people in the comment section below my video stated that there were strange goings on at the Dakota. So I decided it would be a fun thing to look into. So let's find out what makes the Dakota a weird place to be. When it was built, according to NewYorkGhost.com, the Dakota is located on the northwest corner of Central Park West and 72nd Street across the road from Strawberry Fields. The building was designed by Henry Janway Hardenberg, who would go on to design the Plaza Hotel and the Waldorf Astoria. Astoria. No detail was overlooked in the design and floor plan, up to 16 rooms in some apartments, a highly embellished exterior, and an overall style that defies easy classification. Some called it Chateauesque and some German Renaissance. The address had been upscale and exclusive from the start. Construction started on October 25th of 1880, but did not finish until October 27th of 1884. The surroundings were a long way from the action of the time, and the downtown was a lot further south than it is today. Some joke that the name refers to the remoteness of the building, in 1972, the building was added to the Register of Historic Places. However, it wasn't until 1976 that the building was considered a historic landmark. So this building has been around a long time, and something that's been around that long is sure to have some weird happenings, so let's dig in and see. Ghost Reports The first reporting of ghosts started in early 1960s. I'm surprised it took that long. But a construction worker stated that he saw the body of a man, but it had the face of a young boy. So that was strange. Uh, today, residents claim to have seen a little girl dressed in period clothing, waving and smiling from several lower windows. Residents in their apartments have seen objects in their apartments move by themselves. I would be very afraid to see that. And the objects that moved weren't always small, small things. There was furniture and rugs that moved too, and that would really freak me out. Other residents have said to have heard small footsteps and odd noises at strange times. According to the NewYorkGhost.com, Frederick Weinstein, a resident with his wife Susanna, went on record reporting seeing the lights of a chandelier in his living room from the street below, and he saw this through the 72nd Street window. However, he doesn't have any chandeliers, but when he ran into his apartment, the lights were gone. And then upon further inspection, he did notice a patched up set of bolts in the ceiling where a chandelier had once hung. So that's kind of eerie. <laughs> a repairman, electricians, and other visitors to the replacement have reported seeing an apparition of a short man with a long nose and beard wearing wireframe glasses, a wig, and a frock coat. <clears throat> the description of the ghost may be a match to a guy named Edward Clark who built the Dakota but never lived to see it completed. Uh, the actress Judy Holliday was only 43 when she passed away from breast cancer. Holliday spent the last years of her life in apartment number 77. And after her life was tragically cut short, uh, painters began seeing ghosts in her former home. And two ghosts have appeared at various times, both male and one painter even reported having his hand grabbed by one of them. <laughs> so I'd be out of there right now if I, something happened like that to me. But the most sinister case of ghost activity was when a porter took a tenant down to the basement to show objects that were moving by themselves. And the porter said a bar came flying by him and almost hit him. And when he went to pick it up, it was too heavy for him to lift. So <laughs> yikes. Uh, there's no mention of what year this one happened. Next, we have John Lennon sightings. Well, Yoko had said that she saw John playing the piano at her apartment. If John had been anywhere, it sure would be the place he loved to be at with his belongings and with yoga. She said John spoke to her and claimed, he said, Do not be afraid, I'm still here with you. So that's got to be comforting for yoga. Also, uh, of course, John Lennon was murdered in the archway of the southern entrance. And sometime after the murder, many people claimed to have seen Lennon leaning against the wall in a white flared suit in the stone archway where he died. And he was seen by several people with the eerie light surrounding him. So that's kind of weird. Then we have a thing where John sees a ghost in UFOs. 
Uh, when John was alive, he was witness to events at the Dakota, too. He said he saw a UFO when he was looking out the apartment window. According to Grunge.com, Lennon went on to describe his close encounter, stating that he was lying in bed and he felt the urge to look out into the street. I went to the window, just dreaming around in my usual poetic frame of mind. To cut a long story short, out there, as I turned my head, over into the next building, no more than 100 feet away, was this thing with ordinary electric light bulbs flashing on and off around the bottom. One non-blinking red light on the top. What the Nixon is that, I says to myself, for no one else is there. <laughs> he was so taken for what he had seen, or was it a publicity thing, that he said on his Walls and Bridges album package that he'd seen a UFO. And why don't you ask him about it? <laughs> he went on to state that a friend spotted the same thing and that a phone call to the police the next day revealed that two other people had reported similar experiences. And John claimed also that he saw a ghost who he named the crying lady ghost in the hallway. So that's kind of creepy too. Next up is Rosemary's Baby. Uh, this may have nothing to do with it, but the movie Rosemary's Baby filmed the exterior to be the Bramford, which was the residence in the movie that some of the central characters lived at. Things happened to people in the production of the movie. Uh, the composer Christoph Kometa fell into a coma in an eerie coincidence that mirrored the book. And then producer William Castle's misfortune came next with a severe case of kidney stones. And while he was at the hospital, he had hallucinations about the movie. And of course, uh, director Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, had become interested in the occult as a result of the movie. And she was killed by the members of the Manson family. I think it had more to do with the movie that they made than the Dakota itself. Well, the Dakota has that look of history and with that history and age come stories that are tagged onto it. It could be truth or fiction, and it's left up to the individual to decide. One thing is for sure, it makes for some interesting stories. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. And if you haven't subscribed yet, if you could, that would be good too. And I wish everybody a wonderful day today. Thank you. Bye.